Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sula, fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. If you've watched my videos on treating cervical radiculopathy, you'll see that a cervical epidural steroid injection is one of the best ways to take inflammation off the nerve and it's a good non-surgical way to treat a pinched nerve that's causing neck or arm pain. So what that involves is taking a needle and coating the nerve or the spinal cord with steroid, which is a very strong anti-inflammatory. And what that does is it shrinks the nerve so the nerve can learn to live in a small space. It doesn't really solve the problem which is the pinching itself, but what it does is it just calms the nerve down to see if the body can heal itself. Epidural steroid injections are performed by interventional radiologists, anesthesia pain management doctors, physiatrists, and even surgeons. But no matter who's performing the injection, make sure that they perform at least 200 or so a year, if not more, and that it's always guided by CT guidance or fluoroscopy x-ray guidance. The epidural steroid injection of the cervical spine is placed in the epidural space, so epi means outside, and dura is the covering of the spinal cord and nerves. So if the spinal cord and nerves live in fluid, that fluid is covered by a thin sac of thinnest saran wrap, so an epidural steroid injection is putting medicine over the nerve or cord. There's two different types of epidural steroid injections in the cervical spine. The first is something called a central epidural steroid injection. So that involves taking the needle, and this is the center aspect of the cervical spine, and medicine is placed in the midline here around the spinal cord, which is what you see in yellow. A transforaminal epidural steroid injection is placed over the nerves, and a transforaminal epidural steroid injection is also called a selective nerve injection because it's selectively going over each of these particular nerves. The kind of medication that goes in is almost always local anesthetic, which is placed over the skin just so you don't feel the needle going in. Inside the syringe that goes over the nerve is a long-acting anesthetic, which is usually something called marcaine, combined with a steroid, which is the same thing as cortisone. There are many different types of cortisone or steroids on the market, and your doctor will choose the right one for you. Cervical epidural steroid injections are either performed in the office setting or at a surgery center. In the office setting, we obviously can't do IV sedation, and so it's really just local anesthetic. The advantage of a surgery center is that they can give you IV sedation, which is like twilight sedation. It's not full on general anesthesia, but it's twilight sedation, a little bit like uh, when you have a colonoscopy. So essentially you remember some of it, but not all of it, and uh, definitely the pain and anxiety is probably a little bit less if it's done at a surgery center. Again, no matter where it's done, you have to make sure that's being done under x-ray or CT guidance. For a cervical epidural steroid injection, if it's a central cervical epidural steroid injection done in the middle around the spinal cord, the patient's placed prone or face down so the needle can come from the top in. If it's a transforaminal epidural steroid injection or selective nerve injection, the patient is usually placed supine or face up so the needle can come from outside in through the side and coat the nerve. Today we'll be watching one of my partners, Dr. Naidu, who's a nationally recognized anesthesia pain management expert, perform a central cervical epidural steroid injection on one of our patients at the surgery center. Again, the process for a selective nerve root injection is really the same as a central cervical epidural, except for a selective nerve root injection, the patient's placed in, in that supine position. Before any injection, you'll notice that the entire team does a pause and does a timeout just to verify that the team is doing and injecting the correct level, meaning C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, etc., and also the correct side, the right side or the left side. Okay, so this is a timeout for Judith born 2-7-1946. She's consented to have cervical 5-6 interlaminar epidural steroid injection done by Dr. Naidu. She has allergies to penicillin and sulfa. Penicillin, she gets hives. Sulfa, she gets rash. She is NPO, not on any thinners, and we all agree. Agree. Okay, agree. Uh, for the first procedure we have coming up, the cervical interlaminar epidural steroid injection, the goal of the procedure is to basically bathe the epidural space with a combination of local anesthetic, which is a numbing agent, and steroid, which, you know, frankly, we, we hope reduces inflammation, but also may have some epigenetic changes, and we'll get into that another time. So what I tell patients is uh, what we do is we, we bring you into the room after we obtain consent, and in the room is a fluoroscopy technician who's taking x-ray during the entire procedure. There's also a sedation nurse who provides sedation through the IV if that's what you choose to have. 
And then there's a scrub tech or an assistant who's handing off the equipment and my medications. And, and the most important thing we do is get you positioned, ready for the injection, uh, making sure everything looks good under the x-ray or fluoroscopy. Uh, once that's achieved and the sedation's going in, uh, generally we like to get you into a twilight state or moderate conscious sedation in which you might be able to feel things or hear conversations but it's less likely that you're going to remember things. There's still a possibility you'll remember you know, a lot of what you hear because everyone's tolerance and, and their own genetics play a role in how much the sedation affects them. So when we get started, I, I start with some numbing agent, uh, which will feel like a little bee sting or a pinch and burn. And then after that, you should just feel pressure. Sometimes as we get closer to the epidural space, you might feel some sensations going down the arm, for example, when we're doing a cervical, uh, and that's completely normal. Uh, that's actually a good sign for me to say, all right, I'm really close to the nerve. I can back off a little bit. Uh, and then what I do under fluoroscopy is just ensure with a little contrast or dye, making sure that the flow of the injectate is going to where we want it to go. Right. Translaminar, right? Correct. So you saw that loss of resistance. Yeah, through the laminar. Means I'm in, and then Rosa back to AP. So right now it's going off to the right. What I can do now is direct the bevel, a little lean on, and then we're just going to check your mitten. So it's still going off to the right, so I'm going to... Now it's going up the midline, I like that. Turn the bevel. Although it's a little bit right-sided, I'm okay. So, 176, and then... So I went beyond to the right side and bring it down. This is the contrast dye. There we go. So it started going to the left. So the dark is the contrast. Correct. And this is a washout view, so you'll see now it's on both the left and the right sides. And you can see how it spreads all the way even up to C3 and then down to T1. So that's all the dark areas there. We'll Correct. Point that out, yeah. Correct. And that's it. So then the steroid goes in now? Correct. So that's the steroid and that syringe. That is it. And I'm going to just pull back the needle. So now if she were to move her head, it's totally safe. Everything looks good. Doing okay? Yeah. It's, it's, I can feel whatever's going on. Okay. There. Well, we're all done. Do you feel a lot of pain? No pain. I do. I just feel like um, but, you know, nothing serious. Just a little discomfort. Yeah. Perfect. So how long did that take? Off, Judith, okay? what? You're all done, Judith. I'm just unhooking some of the Five, five, five six minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thirteen seconds of radiation. So our recovery area is here. Right out here. And they are expecting her. Judith, how do you feel? Was that painful? No. Wasn't too bad? No. The team did a good job? Yeah. So top two risks, let's say, for cervical epidurals, what would you say they are? Yeah, so for a transforaminal epidural steroid injection, um, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to see, the biggest risk is a risk of stroke and paralysis. And the, and the reason for that is there have been some cases where the vertebral artery or the radicular artery has been infiltrated and either uh, there's been air injected or a particulate steroid that's caused uh, ischemia to the brain or, or reduced oxygen to the brain, which has had some catastrophic consequences. For the intralaminar epidural steroid injections, we're doing a different approach basically from the, the midline or the back and up. And the, the biggest risk there is something called a posterior puncture headache, uh, which is where if we inadvertently get into the, the fecal sac or we get cerebrospinal fluid, that puncture can cause a headache that's really associated with standing up and gets uh, alleviated by lying down. And usually that lasts for about a few days, up to a couple weeks. In rare situations, that can become a long-term issue. And let's say somebody gets a postural puncture headache, what do you recommend them do? 
fluids and then using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs if they can. Uh, caffeinate, uh, which sounds strange, but it's true that caffeine can help with some of those headaches. And if the thing, if the headache gets really severe, you're really limited, then we can use tryptan medications like Imitrex. Okay, so first drink a lot of water, drink a lot of coffee, and so lay flat. Yep, lay flat. And if it's uh, worse, let us know. And by the way, I've ordered over 5,000 cervical transfernals in my life. And yes, there's a risk of stroke, et cetera. And that sounds horrible. If you're telling me that that could happen, I don't want that. But yet I've ordered that thousands of times because I simply don't see that complication when you guys are doing these injections. So even though it's a risk, just like there's a risk of dying if you walk across the street and a bus hits you, what are the actual chances of that happening from a percentage standpoint? Because again, I've never seen that. Extremely, extremely low. And, and the reason why I, I'm describing it is because as you can imagine, when these cases occur, they're, they get magnified in our interventional pain community because these are elective procedures and we, we certainly are not accustomed to seeing such types of complications from a needle-based procedure. But as you said, Dr. Sue, this is extremely, extremely rare. After the injection, if you've had it done in the office, it's probably a good idea to have somebody drive you home, although technically you could drive home by yourself because you've, you haven't had sedation. If it's done at a surgery center because of the sedation that's given, you absolutely need to have somebody drive you home. I usually tell patients that it's good to rest and not work out or do any strenuous exercise for up to a week just to let the steroid marinate around the nerve. And also understand that sometimes there may be some local anesthetic benefit, meaning that local anesthetic gave that nerve a little bit of relief, but it can take up to two weeks for that nerve pain to get better. So don't despair if it's a week and you're not better. I tell patients not to get too worried. It can take up to two weeks to work. In terms of frequency of injections, we don't like patients getting more than four injections a year because it can cause osteoporosis. It can also cause blood sugar problems. And in general, we like to separate injections by at least six weeks. In my practice, if two injections don't work or the injections are pretty short lived, either have patients live with the pain or have it surgically fixed if it's a surgically correctable problem. Hopefully you learned something about what a cervical epidural steroid injection is and what it looks like. Don't forget to click the like button and leave comments in the comment box below.